Today I'm going to show you how to use Firestore from Firebase to use as a database for your next application. Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam and Firestore from Firebase is a great option if you just want to integrate an easygoing database. I just integrated one yesterday with an application I'm working on and it took me literally 20 minutes instead of having to write a node server which takes many many hours. So we're gonna go into how to exactly set up Firestore with your React application. First you want to log in to Firebase. Firebase is a sub project of Google Cloud. So you want to log in to console.firebase.google.com and then create a project. We can name whatever we want. Today we're going to name it as a school directory because this is what I'm building for this tutorial. We accept the terms and continue. We can or cannot enable Google Analytics for this project. This can always be changed afterwards, so we leave it out right now. And now we are in our project. Now we have to add an app to our project. We can do it as iOS, Android, or what we're gonna do, a web app. Then we again have to name it. We could also set up something like Firebase Hosting. This would be something like Netlify, where we could host the app. But we don't wanna do this. We just wanna use Firestore for our database. So we're gonna register the app. And here we get a login or API credentials. We could copy it already here, but let's continue to console. I'm going to show you how to get this information from the console. So now if you go to develop, we can see a database, the storage, hosting, we can do all kinds of stuff. But today we're just going to focus on the database. Then here, let's create a database. And here it asks us if you want to set up the security rules in a production mode or as a test mode. Keep in mind, that if you start in test mode, the database will be not available after 30 days of creating the database to view, edit and delete anything from the database. So keep that in mind. So don't set up a project in the test mode and then forget about that rule. And after 30 days, you can't do anything anymore with the application. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to start in test mode. Then we choose the Cloud Firestore location. And now we have our database ready. Firebase uses something similar to MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database, and we can start with a collection. We can name this collection whatever we want. In our case, it's schools. And with Firebase, we always have collections, documents, collections, documents, which are nested in each other. So we started with a school collection, and here we can add a school document, so which will be a unique school. We could either use the auto ID from Firestore itself, or what I like to do is make this descriptive. So let's call this school one. Then we want to add a field for our data model. We want a title, which is a string with the value school one. Then let's add an ID with some kind of value and then a description. We can choose here strings, number, booleans, map, all the kind of different types you're used to and even more. But for this tutorial, that's enough. And let's save that. And I'm just going to add another one right here. Now we have our database with the collection schools with two documents, school one and school two with the respective data. And that was already it. Now we are able to integrate Firestore to our React app. So here we have a basic React application, which I created with Create React App. And I deleted all the boilerplate. I just have the app.js, a Firebase.js. We're going to use that afterwards to initialize the Firebase or Firestore app. Index.css, which I put some kind of styling into. And then, of course, the index.js, which bundles everything up. So let's go into Firebase.js and initialize the database. This is where we need the API credentials of Firestore. So let's get them now. So we go here back to our dashboard, project settings, and then down here we have the configuration. With the React app, we can use this config variable and we're gonna just copy and paste that to our Firebase.js file. And now we have to install Firebase from npm which we do from the terminal.
And now if that's finished, we're going to import Firebase in our Firebase file. So here we have Firebase imported and then we also import Firestore from Firebase itself. And then Firebase has a method called initialize app where we use our Firebase config object as a parameter. And then let's add an export default where we export Firebase and save that. Now let's go to our app.js. Here I just have a simple application with the use state hook for schools and set schools, which we set to an empty array in the beginning. And then we have loading and set loading, which is set to false in the beginning. Then we imported Firebase from our before created Firebase JS file. And here we want to create a variable that's equal to Firebase, which you import from here. And then we want to add the method Firestore and then collection where we reference the collection we created. And down here, if loading is true, we just want to return an H1 with loading. Else we want to return a div with a title, in our case schools, and then we want to map through all of the elements in a database and return a div with an H2 with the title and a paragraph with the description. And that's already it. So that's our little app. So what exactly is the variable ref? Let's console log that. And this is how our app looks like right now. So we can see that's the ref variable. So not really useful for our case. So what we have to do now is create a function that returns a document from the database. And we can do that in two ways. Either we can use the get method, but what Firestore is actually for is that we create a real time subscription to our database. So let's start with that. Here we have a get schools function, which we wanna call in a use effect. So down here we have the use effect with an empty dependencies array and we're gonna call get schools in here. Of course, let's import use effect up here. So how does that actually work? Before we do anything else, we wanna set loading to true and then we're gonna call our variable ref and add an on snapshot method to it. Then we wanna reference something that, that Firestore calls query snapshot and we want to initialize an empty array called, in our case, items. But we could also name it schools or kind of whatever we want. Then the query snapshot is a similar item than our ref item up here. But what we want to do is we want to loop through them. And for each document in that query snapshot, we want to apply the data method to it, which comes from Firebase itself, and then put that result into our items array. And then we want to set our variable here, which we have in our React hook to the items array. And of course, after all of that, we want to set loading to false. So how does that look like right now? So we can see it actually already worked. So we can see our database items here. And this is amazing. We set the whole thing up in under five minutes. Now, the amazing thing with the query snapshot method we used here for this example, afterwards, we're going to use the get method, which works a little bit differently, is that it's real time. That means it will magically change in our UI if we change something in our database. So let's do that now. So if we go to our database and change something here, We can see in more or less real time that this has changed here without us doing anything. And that's the magic of the Firebase Firestore database. And yes, I know for developers that use RESTful APIs, this is quite scary. But believe me, this is most of the time the better option instead of option number two, which I'm going to show you now, which is a one time get request because Cloud Firestore actually does everything in the back end very efficiently. And I tried it out in an experiment myself and using the query snapshot is usually more performant than an individual get request. But anyway, let's do that now. So we're back in our app.js. Let's comment that out and let's add our other function to get the schools. We also want to call that in our use effect hook. And what's going to happen here again, we're going to set loading to true. Then again, we have the ref variable where we're going to append the get function that comes from Firestore itself. This is asynchronous and returns something that in our example, we call item. And in that item, we want to reference the docs where we want to map through that, where we want to append to every doc, the method data, which again comes from Firebase, which is the exact same function we had up here. And then we set that equal to a variable, which we call in our example items. But again, we can call it school or whatever we want. And then we set schools from our React hook up here to those items. And then of course, set loading to false because the operation has finished. So what happens if we save that? 
it works again and let's say if you want to refresh we can see loading quickly and then the schools get populated again so what happens here if we now change something on the firebase database so let's go here this is a great great school now we can see nothing happens not like before where we had the automated update so what we need to do now is manually refresh it and now we see this is the great great school and that's how it works one thing i want to show you though is in the firebase js we don't want to store our data like here not really just because of security issues which is not a big issue because we should secure our database with our database security rules if you remember in the beginning we said that to at the moment the test environment i will not go into the security rules in this video but in another video i will publish soon so make sure to subscribe to not miss that what we most probably want to do is put them in a dot env or dot environment file if you create a react app with create react app if you have a dot env file in the root folder it will automatically recognize that and we can import it like so so here I already put in the credentials we already had before for the API of Firebase. So the same ones like in here. But what we can do now if we have it in a .env file is importing them like this. Again, if you created your app with create react app, this will automatically be recognized and it will be imported. But make sure to have your .env file here in the root folder. And then what you would do if you want to build out your app on Netlify or on Firebase itself, you would put those variables on your server. But for simplicity, you could also do it like this. The higher security risk is not really too big with that because as I said before, you should protect your database with the security rules anyway. By the way, the security rules can be found here, here in rules. Again, I will have a video about how to set up those rules uh, at a later time. So make sure to subscribe to not miss that. But for now, this was it for the video. I hope it helped and hope to see you in the next one.